Hi, my name is Lieutenant Gary Aswald, and welcome to a tour of every single version of Nuketown to ever grace our... Hey, I don't think that one's right. Let's start off with the OG. Two letters that here stand for Original Game Black Ops 1. Taking place in the 1960s, this first Nuketown is set in the Nevada desert, where the US military are conducting an off-the-books operation, seeing what would happen if they nuked the hell out of a neighborhood. And I'll give you three guesses as to what happens next. Strutting your way around this classic takes you back to a simpler time. One where there was only one kind of sprint, sliding was for those with strict nat types, and all of your neighbors were mannequins. Now everybody knows about the layout, but for those of you out there who somehow haven't played this map upwards of 3,624 times, or are literal babies, I'll try to sum it up as quickly as possible. <clears throat> The map is the size of a cul-de-sac, with two houses acting as each team's main base. They have backyards that are perfect for spawn traps, and interiors with upstairs windows as power positions. There's also a bus and another large truck in the middle, breaking up the flow and creating small circular flanking routes. Oh, and uh, goo goo ga ga. Every single Nuketown follows the same layout, with very few variations. Kind of like the national anthem at the Super Bowl, where each game the artist likes to put their own slight spin on things, which your older relatives will complain about, but let's be honest, the national anthem already kind of sucks anyway, doesn't it? Nuketown is also known for its mannequin easter eggs, where if you shoot all their heads off in a certain amount of time, quote, cool stuff happens. Like in BO3, they come alive, chasing you down. In BO2, it unlocks arcade games that you can play on the Nuketown sign. And in Cold War, it gives you cataracts. But this very first Nuketown's Easter egg is by far the best. See, when you shoot all of the heads off here, a song will play. Black Ops 2 brings Nuketown into the future, or at least what people in the 60s thought the future would be like, where school buses have fins, TVs are oval, and this haircut never goes out of style. It's also pretty damn bright. I thought the future was supposed to be black, damn it. This Nuketown plays pretty much exactly the same as the last one, fast-paced and spawn-trappy which coincidentally is also how they all play. The RCXD path that I forgot to mention in the Black Ops 1 version because it's so seldom used is back. And it also doesn't really ever get used. So remember back when this game came out and the year 2025 was like unfathomable? Just so many years into the future that most people, including my 15 year old self, didn't think they'd actually see it because the concept of time moving forward was as foreign a concept as deodorant and a 9 to 5 job? Well take a look at your calendars folks, the future is now! But you know, this isn't looking all that accurate to real life. Oh there we go, now it's perfect. Black Ops 2 also introduced Nuketown Zombies, which is exactly what you'd expect. Uh, th uh, there's zombies now. Perks drop from the sky every few rounds or so, which is this map's funny little gimmick, like Darius's Teleporter, Mob of the Dead's Afterlife System, and Modern Warfare Zombies' Expiration Date. Nuketown Zombies perfectly encapsulates what makes Nuketown Nuketown. It's simple, fun, and for some reason, always a DLC or pre-order bonus. Welcome to Nook 3 Town, by far the most high-tech and futuristic Nuketown to date. Now, I think this one is set in a dream sequence like most of the Black Ops 3 campaign, but honestly, I can't remember anything about the story of this game, so I'm just gonna run with that if you don't mind. It's shinier, more streamlined, Slick. These are all words that mean the same thing. Those signature yellow and green houses have now been replaced with orange and blue. Bocce ball is now a working shuffleboard court, and the walls around the map are now taller to accommodate the jetpack and wall running mechanics of this game specifically, adding brand new ways of getting clotheslined on your way out of spawn. The RCXD path has even been updated. Wait, no, no! It's gone! You monsters! 
BO4's take on Nuketown, passionately named Nuketown, now takes place in the USSR and is covered in a thick layer of God's dandruff. This one's the biggest departure visually, with the houses acting as mere fronts for Soviet spies putting together a super secret plot to, uh, Man, honestly, I don't know where this game is supposed to take place either. This is probably my least played Nuketown of the bunch. Not for any particular reason, other than Black Ops 4 just in general felt more like a fever dream than an actual real video game. They did actually make history though by having not one, not two, but three different iterations of Nuketown in this one game. Nuketown Island is the second, taking place in Blackout, where they, well, gave Nuketown its own island, which I'm a little surprised was never converted into a resurgence or ground war map over the years. Taking place after the nuke, or some other big boom doom has gone off, this one is completely destroyed, and that includes the barriers, so now you can visit other houses. Wow, you know, this isn't nearly as interesting as I would have thought. This is also your periodic reminder that for some reason, Blackout specifically looked like an art school for the blinds art class on Pottery Day. But what Nuketown Island lacks on the surface, it more than makes up for underground, where the Fallout Bunker is now freely accessible to all. Wow, this place has curtains and a barbecue with zero ventilation? Why would I ever want to leave and take my chances on the surface? But Black Ops 4 isn't done yet, because in Zombies that year, Alpha Omega was released, dropping players into the familiar, yet now darker neighborhood that's plagued Minecraft servers and paintball facilities everywhere for the last decade. And it's exactly the same as the other Nuketown Zombies, uh, but more cluttered and with laser guns. And it's like way bigger. So uh, not at all exactly this. Why did I say that? It also features those same underground tunnels from Nuketown Island though, that I constantly get lost in despite the fact that there are signs telling me where to go. I'm like your dad who insists that he knows better than the GPS, but is at most three wrong turns from a nervous breakdown in a McDonald's parking lot. Then there's the Nuketown on COD Mobile, which is really just Black Ops 1's again, but is somehow better looking, right? I guess it's true what they say. Modern phones are more powerful than what NASA used to live tweet the moon landing. Now, I've never played COD Mobile before making this tour, and uh, are the players always this bad? Like at some point I just started running laps back and forth to try to see how many times I could go from backyard to backyard without dying. And I'm the MVP. Then this is where I was gonna end the COD Mobile section, but it turns out there's way more to the Nuketown Iceberg than I thought on this little Casino for Kids app. Like have y'all ever seen this one for the Lunar New Year set in a futuristic, quote, city called Nuketown Temple? And another one for the Year of the Dragon, which is a nighttime Nuk 3 town, but with a totally real dragon? Oh, and there's also Nuketown Russia here too. Great. There's even Warzone's Gulag, which was actually set in Nuketown for a couple of seasons a few years back. But it was only the middle section and was made out of somehow even cheaper plywood. And similarly, there's Nuke House, from the mostly unknown Black Ops Declassified on the Vita, making it the only Black Ops game to actually live up to its title. Now, I'm not lucky enough to be in the middle of the Venn diagram of 12 people who bought this game and seven people who bought a PS Vita, so I can't say that I have any first-hand experience with it, but it looks like if the original Nuketown was run through a face smoothing filter on Snapchat and also lost a few tons because now it's just the yellow, AKA best side. Hashtag yellow house gang for life. And lastly, here we are in Cold War, returning to the OG's old stomping grounds, but now updated and looking a little bit less decimated and more decayed, covered in graffiti and vandalism that you'd only see from little shit kids living in the middle of a desert. And walking around these hollowed grounds, I can't help but feel Nuketown as a concept is a pretty damn good metaphor for the franchise that it's home to. Each iteration, like a mile marker, or maybe a time capsule for the series, 
showing just what state the franchise was in at the time that each was crafted. Black Ops 1's Nuketown was fresh, with an interesting setting, and it was really only the third tiny map in COD after Shipment and Rust, so that map type wasn't oversaturated quite yet. Then Black Ops 2 dropped it into the future, another fresh take, but with the same core gameplay that everybody loved. Black Ops 3 was another one set in the future, displaying the series' stagnation starting to form, which was indicative of the entire jetpack era. Then Black Ops 4 is a game that just didn't know what it wanted to be, and that's shown by all three modes having their own nuketown, like they're just trying to cover their bases in any way that they can. And then lastly is Cold Wars, which was completely shattered and destroyed. And I'll let you figure out what that one means. And that's where I'll end today's tour. Thank you so much for watching, and thank you for your patience. I promised this video months ago, um, but a whole nother game came out, and I, I, I'm sorry. If you enjoyed, check out the last one we did on DOS House. And everyone else can exit through the gift shop, where we're selling commemorative bobbleheads of people who survived the nuclear fallout here. The heads are actual size.